Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis, thank you all for stopping by to watch. So I've been getting a lot of questions from folks uh, through emails, comments, and other ways of asking, well, what do I need to be stocking up on right now? Things are obviously getting worse. Things are spiraling out of control. Uh, every day it seems like there's just something more happening and people are wondering, you know, are there things that I need to be, you know, really focusing on right now? Uh, some of you are brand new. I still get emails, in fact, just in the last couple of days from people that are saying, you know, I, I just I just realized that I really need to be doing this and I, I need some tips on it. And some of you have been doing this for a while and you're just wondering, you know, what are some things maybe I forgot uh, or things that I just need to add to? So in doing that and thinking about it, I came up with 10 items that are pretty cheap. This is stuff that's it's very cheap to buy, uh, and you can get have access to it quite easily. Most of your local stores will have all of these items, and you can also order a lot of these items on Amazon uh, or other uh, shipping services and have them uh, drop directly to you. So they're, they're cheap in that way, and they're good items. These are items that that have a, you know, maybe a medicinal use, maybe it's food, maybe it's personal hygiene, maybe it's medical, or maybe it's taking care of, of any animals on your homestead, uh, and that you can bulk up on it pretty quickly and pretty cheap. And so uh, I want to get into that, and I'll bring the camera in closer so that you can see some of these items and, and show you these 10. Now, that, again, this, this isn't the only thing that you're going to stock up on, of course, but these are items that, like I said, you can stock up on quickly and acquire quite a bit of it for really not a whole lot of money. All right, the first thing that we're going to talk about is food. Uh, food is a pretty obvious one. Well, we absolutely have to have it to survive, so we're going to go through some food items that are pretty cheap. The first one here is blackstrap molasses. A lot of people don't really think about this. Maybe you don't know about it. Maybe you don't cook with it. Maybe you've never even had it. Uh, it is a sugar. It comes from sugar cane, but it's very syrupy, dark, and black. Um, now, this stuff has about a one-year shelf life. Uh, if you keep it just like this in a cool dark place on the shelf, but you can extend the shelf of life of this Longer if you have the refrigerator space to put something like this uh, It's actually quite cheap a gallon of it like this runs around eight dollars a gallon around here um, And you can use it in cooking and, and just about anything back in the old days This was the primary sugar for a lot of people especially here in the Ozarks uh, This was a, a common uh, a sugar that was used the the good thing about blackstrap molasses especially the blackstrap, which means it's the, the darkest and the thickest concentrated form, is it's very rich in minerals. Uh, minerals that, that a lot of people are already deficient in uh, just because of our modern American diet. And we will certainly become more deficient in these uh, if times get tough and we're not able to, to eat quite as healthy as we're used to uh, because things may just become more scarce. So I, I would encourage you to, to stock up on this, but you need to learn how to cook with it uh, it's actually, it's a, it's a very great product uh, to, to cook with and to use. Uh, in fact, one of my favorite things is just a blackstrap molasses milkshake. Um, along with that is also honey. And honey doesn't need a whole lot of, of explanation. We know that honey has a pretty much an indefinite shelf life. It's a great sweetener, um, and it's actually a healthy sweetener. Uh, it's, it's healthier than sugar. It also has... Um, a lot of antimicrobial properties. It can be used medicinally. You can actually use it on a wound uh, that's infected to, to help uh, reduce the infection of it. it it's, it's very good. And again, it has a very long shelf life. Uh, and I would encourage people to, to stock up on it. I would encourage you to stock up on locally grown honey for the most part. Uh, most of our honey is local, but occasionally we come into a, a, a good deal on honey that may not be quite as local but they're still a a good quality honey going along with the foods um, just old-fashioned oats um, a lot of preppers including myself often mention things like rice and beans you know that's kind of the cliche uh, food for, for preparedness but old-fashioned oats is very cheap uh, you can buy it obviously in in big two and a half pound or so cans like this but you can also buy it in big bags in bulk, 25 pound, 50 pound bags. Either way, uh, it's, it's a good product to have. It is much more nutritional than rice, and it's easier to cook than rice. Um, it's, uh, you, you don't even have to cook it. You can do what's called overnight oats, which is something that we do occasionally uh, for breakfast in the morning, is have overnight oats uh, in the refrigerator, um, and by the morning, uh, they're ready to eat. 
And like I said, they're much more nutritional. They also stick to your ribs a, a lot better. When I was a kid, we ate a lot of oats uh, and it, it, it kept you feeling full a lot longer. So I would, I would recommend making sure you have a good supply of, of oat, uh, just plain old fashioned oats. Another one when it comes to food is peanut butter. Um, peanut butter is probably not the best thing for say a bug out bag because it is quite weighty. But, you know, if things get really bad and the doo-doo hits the fan and maybe you're stuck on your property, you're kind of bugging in and you're, you're really having to survive, I assure you, you're going to be burning calories way more than what you're burning right now. Uh, you're going to need a much higher caloric intake and, and something like peanut butter can take care of that because it's a good, healthy uh, calorie. It's got a, a lot of protein and fat. And, you know, if, if you're just kind of stuck on eating beans and rice and maybe oatmeal because that's all you stocked up on, um, there's a lot of things that's missing in that diet. And even just having a few spoonfuls a day of, of peanut butter uh, can certainly give you that energy boost and nutrition level that you need. I'm not saying it's the healthiest thing, but it is a very cheap item that you can stock up on uh, and have uh, to, to add to your, your nutritional needs uh, when things get rough. Moving on to something that's a food and, and, and something else is salt. I know, you've heard it a thousand times. Every prepping channel, every prepping blog, everywhere talks about salt 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 every prepper movie you know in time apocalyptic you know armageddon's it's always about salt and you hear stories about how salt uh, will become more valuable than gold and all that well i'm not here to say that but i am here to say that salt is actually really important uh, yes we probably all have heard the stories about how salts uh, were, were, were caused wars to happen in the past, and it was used as a, as a form of currency. This is all true, but it's still true today of how important salt is. Most modern people only think of salt as a seasoning on your food. And you might say, are people that desperate to have their food taste good, that they would start wars over it, and that they would use it as a currency? No, F salt also has some other great properties. Before the advent of refrigeration and even modern canning, salt was how you preserved food. You can preserve just about any kind of food with salt. Uh, in fact, uh, doing fermentation of vegetables, uh, all you really need is salt and water, and you can ferment and preserve about anything that grows in your garden. Same way with meat. Uh, you can dry out and preserve uh, meat with salt. There's some modern ways to do it that makes it a little bit better, but really in the end, just plain old salt works. Now, I highly recommend getting a good quality full mineral salt, like a sea salt. Um, this here, you're probably familiar with real salt. Um, it's, it's probably in my, it's in my opinion, this is probably the best, this Redmond's real salt, um, but a good quality sea salt because it has a lot of minerals. Again, minerals that people typically in the United States and the modern West, uh, are deficient in because of our modern diets and something like this can help stay away from stocking up on iodized salt, iodized salt, uh, with the iodine that's in it is not good for preservation of foods this is this also has a medicinal value it's kind of like honey in the sense that you can use it to to uh, take infections out of wounds and things uh, so i would encourage you to stock up on salt uh, there are many ways to do it you can actually uh, go to uh, feed stores and there are certain types of salt that's used for for animals uh, that are totally safe to use with with people um, at least it's safe for me and I'm okay with using it. Uh, in fact, Redmond's makes uh, one that, that we have used and on honestly can't tell any difference uh, other than it's, it's a much coarser grind uh, than something like this. And it's pretty cheap. Uh, you, can, you can bulk up on a lot of salt uh, because salt is still relatively cheap and it, it lasts forever. You, know, you don't have to worry about salt expiring. Uh, along with the food, and I don't have it here because, well, we store it in big barrels and I didn't bring it. And this is dealing with animals specifically. I'll show you a video uh, of where we uh, get ours, and that's buying animal corn. Uh, and this is just whole corn in 50-pound bags uh, that you can purchase for your animals. It's pretty cheap. <clears throat> if you buy the kind that's really clean, um, I'm not advising you this, but we have eaten it ourselves, ground it up, and it's perfectly fine. 
not all feed corn is the same. We've purchased certain brands that it's filled with corn husks and little pebbles and, and it's just dirty. It may be okay for cattle, but it's just dirty. Um, whereas some of this brand, the brand that I've shown you on the video, uh, you can get at Orschlands, uh, which is a farm store, much like a tractor supply. And uh, it is extremely clean. It is, there's almost never anything in it. And it's slightly higher than, than others, but uh, it's a good quality uh, food that you can, and I know that corn isn't always the best thing for your animals, but uh, in things that are getting tough and you don't have all the food, if you have chickens and stuff, you can buy this whole corn uh, and it's cheap and bulk up on it in big barrels and you can have a food to feed them to keep them alive. Uh, now moving on to things more like hygiene, disinfectants, medical, that kind of stuff. Uh, right here, vodka. Yes, and times get tough and you're bored and you're a little depressed because you can't go to your Starbucks and the electricity doesn't work so you can't play your video games. You break out this. No, that's not what it's for. Personally, I can't stand it and wouldn't touch it to drink for, uh, you know, a casual drink. But um, distilled alcohols like this uh, can work good for preservation. Uh, you can make uh, herbal tinctures with it. There are other applications for it. Um, there's medicinal applications that you can use this for. There's also disinfectant applications. And something like this type of vodka, these are quite cheap. Uh, this one's in a plastic bottle. And um, while it may taste much worse than a more expensive um, distilled alcohol, as far as its medicinal and disinfectant uh, properties, it's very much, and it's pretty much identical. Um, it just tastes awful, but you can stock up on quite a bit of this. Plus, it's also good for, for bartering, trading. Um, there's, there's just a lot of applications for something like this. Kind of similar to that um, is vinegar. Uh, vinegar, and I've got two different kinds here. We've got white vinegar and we've got apple cider vinegar. Uh, the white vinegar is, is pretty cheap. Uh, this is obviously a little bit more. This has the mother in it and it's a little bit healthier. Both of these uh, can be taken internally and there's a lot of internal good uh, internal medicinal applications and good health applications to vinegar. Um, vinegar is also good at, at being a disinfectant. It won't kill everything, but it certainly will kill a lot of uh, certain viruses and certain bacterias, uh, especially foodborne illnesses. Uh, it, it has a lot uh, of, of application, especially in cleaning, clean your house. And the great thing with vinegar is, is it has an indefinite shelf life. It will last forever. It never goes bad. Uh, and you can stock up on, you know, we use vinegar all the time. I know a lot of people uh, talk about bleach, and bleach certainly is probably the best disinfectant out there. The problem with bleach is it has a really short health, a shelf life. It doesn't last that long, uh, especially in its liquid form, and even in the powdered form it doesn't last uh, as long as something like this would, which is pretty much forever. Uh, so I would certainly look into uh, vinegar. And then going along with the uh, uh, disinfectant and hygiene, uh, alcohol, uh, this, this is isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. This is the 91%. I would definitely try to find the 91% because it's, it's better. Uh, obviously, it has medicinal properties if you're having to clean a wound, sterilize something. Uh, but you can use it just to, just to disinfect your house. Uh, uh, if you're needing to, dis to disinfect a countertop, maybe you've just... Uh, cut up a chicken on it and you don't have anything that's, that can disinfect it, well, you can use something like this and it's still relatively cheap uh, and it's something that you can stock up on and it has an, an extremely long shelf life So uh, because it's, it's a very high content of alcohol. All right, last one. Uh, we're getting into the medical. And um, <clears throat> a lot of this has to do with where you get it. You can buy gauze bandages, uh, tape, things like that. A lot of places you can get them online in bulk. We typically buy a lot of ours at just the local Dollar General store because it's so cheap. Uh, you can go in there with, with $20 and if you just focus on this kind of stuff, you're going to walk out of there with quite a bit. And um, while you may think, you know what, I don't, I don't use, you know, gauze pads and bandages and stuff like that too much now. Well, it's because you live a civilized life. And, and if things continue to get worse and maybe a grid failure or a complete collapse of society or whatever it is that could happen, uh, you're gonna be doing more work outside. 
uh, you're going to be doing more physical labor, um, the, the odds of you injuring yourself are greatly increased uh, because you're not spending your life in a nice, comfortable indoor air condition behind a computer. Uh, so you need to make sure that you have plenty of stuff like this uh, to, to dress wounds uh, because the odds of them happening are going to be much higher uh, as things continue to get worse and maybe we have to truly be more independent and self-sufficient in our lives. All right, um, this is uh, the 10 things that are cheap, you can acquire right now, and that are very important. They're not the only thing. They're not the only thing to, to stock up on, but they're certainly very important. Uh, so I would recommend uh, to, to try to acquire some of this stuff and, and to bulk up on it because, um, well, as we all know, things are starting to, to continue to get worse and, and we need to get, continue to prepare ourselves. All right. Thank you all for watching. Catch you in the next video.